we're, we're three minutes past. We are recording as far as I know. So let's let's get started. I, I'm careful of the sermon mute, although, yeah, it kind of depends on the day. <laughs> Today I was hesitant. Um, anyway, let's, let's get it started. So uh, as usual, welcome everyone to the weekly planning meeting. This is has been public for a while, but this is now um, an explicit invitation for the community to join us just to kind of get to know the contributor team, what we're working on, um, what's kind of in progress, to ask questions. So welcome everyone. Um, this enables everyone in the community to understand what you know what's in the works. Um, we have 30 minutes, um, although often uh, we hit less. We're trying to do it agile style with 30 seconds to a minute updates per pod. And yeah, if you can kind of give your own spin to the slides as you're um, explaining them, that's, that's perfect, that's ideal. The call is recorded, please stay muted unless you're speaking, but questions are welcome, either by mic or in chat. And today on the agenda, um, we're gonna get through pod updates. Um, some of the pods are in the really final stages or have discussed their KPIs, but we're not getting to those quite yet. As um, you can see in the slide, season four goals, um, we're gonna have kind of a more polished final um, kind of product on those DAO wide in next Monday's meeting. And with that, let's, let's get started. We have KPI updates, which I think we now are able to have again. Aaron? Um. I did not update that slide, so these would be historical unless someone else went in there and updated them. Uh, anything you would want to say, like just like verbally? Uh, yeah, we're probably averaging like 40 challenges a month. I think this month's April spend will uh, pay out will be around like 175,000 actually. A lot of that is from March. Um, roughly 125,000 of that is rolling over from March. Um, so, you know, we're not shipping as many challenges in the month of April as we did in the month of March. Um, probably looking closer to being averaging like 40 to 45 uh, challenges per month throughout oh. April and May. Um, and then reevaluating from there. And then the mm -hmm. other one would be X metric holders will not be a core metric. It will likely be um, analysts, which I've shared a sheet around. So go ahead. Just a quick question. How do you see that uh, split in April going between Notion and App Challenges? Just roughly. Uh, probably like 30, 70, 30% going through the app and 70% going through Notion. Anything that gets paid out in a native token, I guess anything that's getting paid out that's not USDC needs to go through um, Notion still. Anything that gets paid out in USDC can go through the app. So. It's roughly 3070 right now. Got it, got it. Thanks for that update. Um, was there more to add or did anyone have any questions before we move on? No. All right, let's um, go to analytics. Zook. Hello. So I'll be presenting analytics slide and then peer review. This first one will be short and sweet. Um, so these stats that I've been giving you uh, might become obsolete as we get uh, some some challenges are launched in the app and others are launched in Notion. So I'm um, working with uh, Kakamura to see if, if the slides will become irrelevant or inaccurate at some point. But Let's assume they're right. So 111 active analysts last week and 28 of those were new. In terms of updates for analytics, we um, prepared a batch of new questions for potential partners. So uh, basically when we try to convince uh, new protocols to use the app or use our services, sometimes we'll write challenge questions and launch them uh, and fund them ourselves just to show them what we can do and they can get a better idea of the results of our analytics program. So we have a 
large batch of questions for potential partners. And um, our team member, Adria, was instrumental in preparing those questions. So we hope to be able to use them uh, this week and next week and throughout the month. Um, we have a new multi-sig wallet that's been set up, but unfortunately we can't use it to launch challenges in the app. Uh, there's a there's a technical problem with that. And um, what's new? Well, Kakamora is working on a testnet version of the app. So this would allow everyone in Bounty Ops to just try launching challenges on testnet before um, doing the real thing with uh, real money. So this will be very useful in our training. So those are all the updates for analytics. Uh, we can move on to two. Okay, thank you, Marina. So uh, last week we we punished a, a plagiarist. So this was a person that has been flagged six times for plagiarism. And we've applied a pretty strict uh, punishment, which consists of a one month ban from Discord, as well as uh, ongoing monitoring of income submissions to make sure we reject all their submissions. And we slashed uh, 3000 X metric from the user's wallet. So they're no longer an X metric master. Um, a new reviewer network has been created. It's called the Watchman. And um, we also have some uh, some courses. A new uh, Twitter Pro course has been given just to help our analysts with their Twitter game. And the next one is April 21st. Um, we're hearing lots of feedback from the community about peer review in the app. And uh, we're still digesting all that feedback and seeing you know, what modifications we need to make. Um, this week, we're going to have a new ongoing um, live uh, dashboard teardowns. So these are when analysts just submit their dashboard for a live review and, and commenting just to help improve and, and get live feedback on their work. Um, so there'll be regular dashboard teardowns like these. Um, I'm going to skip this one and just trying to keep it short. Um, so broken links. Um, sometimes submissions are excluded for broken links. And this is a big uh, concern and blocker for us. because It can take a lot of time to investigate what happened. And um, we, we might start we might stop doing these investigations into bro broken links because these are not the DAO's fault. If uh, Flipside or Dune is experiencing technical issues, there's really nothing we can do about that. Um, so just sharing a little bit of a, of a pain point on our end. Um, so one thing we're working on is uh, spending less time reviewing average dashboard and instead invest more time and money reviewing the great and stellar submissions. So we might tweak our peer review process or experiment with it a little bit just to invest our review time wisely on the very best submissions. Um, so just a, another concern is uh, reviewers acting in bad faith when they're doing peer review in the app. There's There was a person that just flagged every submission as spam and um, to prove a point. I'm not really sure why. But, um, this happened this week, and um, we were pretty disappointed with that. Not sure what we're going to do about it. So these, I'm sorry for all these updates, but that's it for peer review. Please let me know if there's anything else you want to talk about. Thank you. Thank you, Zook, for your updates. There is a question in the chat about the multi-sig for challenge launching. And um, I was also hoping to tackle a question after that um, about the reviewer in bad faith. But maybe let's first do the multi-sig. So Drake asked if there's a workaround being um, worked on or kind of what's the plan with that? Oh. 
Okay, so I'm just gonna, um, just what I know about the multi-sig is, um, so right now the challenges have to be launched from a single wallet and Aaron is, is taking care of it for now. Um, and we're not really sure if we want to distribute large sums of money to team members. We're a little bit concerned about security. So um, I think for now, Aaron is going to continue to launch from his wallet. Um, and I'm not sure if there's a safe workaround for that. So if anyone else has other information, maybe Treasury or maybe Aaron, feel free to jump in. I'm going to so. jump in really briefly just because I feel like this has come up a bunch of other places. I fully agree with Drake. We have social answers to some of these problems rather than tech-based answers. The social answers are costly. I've had messages today saying, hey, GJ, why don't you set better criteria for reviewers and you decide who the reviewers are side by side with messages that say, hey, it doesn't feel fair like one person gets to set what the criteria are for reviewers or to decide it should be more open and transparent. This is really hard to get right. We will continue to try to get right. My ask or the action item is share all the ideas you have. More ideas at this point are better in case somebody strikes gold and we can mess around with what they propose and see if we come up with something creative but it's it's the type of thing we will continue to work on solving. Strongly, strongly encourage uh, any ideas you may have for what actually solving this stuff socially looks like. That's for the peer review, right? Yeah, it's review yeah. is a big one that still causes a lot of angst and heartburn. People care about it a lot. It's very difficult to police every instance of plagiarism. When plagiarism does come up, it's not easy to find out who is responsible or why. Up till now, historically, we've generally erred on the side of being cautious. We are now erring on the side of being harsher in cases where it's become a real problem. I support that evolution for sure. The question always becomes, everybody's got limited time. We want to do really cool stuff. How do we manage this without taking a ton of Sandish's time or Adria's, the bounty bunch, uh, or Marina's or mine to review all the reviewers? Uh, that has the potential just to s dramatically slow the pace at which we're able to do stuff. So we will solve it. We will get social solves for a lot of this stuff. If there are ways to do it more efficiently, if there are processes we can put in place, if there are norms or principles we can establish, if just educating the community is the answer, all of these are on the table. Everything is on the table at this point. So that's why I'm encouraging people to propose ideas. It'll take a multifaceted solution because it's a multifaceted problem. Uh, DJ Zook, where is a good place to have that conversation? If someone in the community wants to kind of weigh in or anyone in the contributor group? I think first plagiarism we've used Dowing in public and we should continue to do so unless it's the type of thing where knowing about how we're solving it is likely to cause people to abuse the system. This is one where erring on the side of transparency, I think will continue to serve us well. Awesome, thank you for adding your thoughts. And there was another question before we let Zook um, go, is, the, is there any update on testnet ETA? And maybe that's for Nomadic as well or anybody else. Yeah, so uh, Takamura is working on the test net app, and we don't have an ETA at this point. Hey, I can gotcha. uh, circle back with the team, and we can figure out uh, like what a formal plan would look like. In the meantime, I had posted links to the um, the preview links and worked through like a little workaround with Takamura that he could use. I'm not sure if that's still viable or not, but we can talk about it on Discord. Thank you both for your updates and thank you everyone. Zook, we really uh, grilled your heart today. <laughs> thank you for all of your updates and questions. No um, problem, let's... thank you. <laughs> let's um, switch over to Challenge Ops and yeah, yeah. Aaron, right? 
Yeah, so we shipped roughly 10 challenges last week in Notion and then shipped another three in the app. Um, app is still taking me roughly two minutes or less to ship a challenge, so it's pretty smooth and easy. Um, no issues there. We did create a multi-sig with Suit brought up. Right now we are transferring funds to that, to my wallet. Um, likely this week we'll probably test transferring funds from that multi-sig to a one other or two other users' wallets from the challenge ops team so that they can ship a challenge themselves. Likely we'll just ship them, you know, 1500 USDC and then allow them to ship a challenge. So you can kind of control uh, any risk, essentially someone walking off with money, which I don't have too much concern here with this group. Um, others is, yeah, you'll see in this slide here, we did start the process setting the goals. Please feel free to click there, check them out, leave comments. Please leave comments and ask questions. Um, so it would be super helpful. This week's priorities, as I mentioned, is shipping like three to five challenges in the app, and then you know at least two of them coming from members of the challenge ops team versus myself. Finalize those goals. Um, and then a big one is like I'm hearing from everyone is these review networks and review issues. I think it's pretty clear that we need to kind of hype up and create some more review networks and start testing this out to control both the budget. Obviously, you know, just looked and saw 244 reviews for which is great within the current system, but obviously potential overspend and we may not need all those reviews. Others would be also just to improve the quality and um, satisfaction of the community as a whole. And then as you can see, you know, there are some challenges that have gone live that I've noticed where submissions aren't actually being reviewed um, nearly at the same level as potentially other challenges, such as the open challenges get tons of reviews. And if you went like the Avalanche right now, uh, those submissions, you know, this morning had no reviews. So trying to figure out, you know, what networks can we tap um, and plug in to essentially ensure that all submissions are getting reviewed at, the, at a consistent level. Yeah, and anyone, so we're shouting out the challenges on the app and the community side as well. And if anyone has any suggestions on um, just like the information bit to make that better and make the take up a little higher, would love to hear from the community side as well. And um, Aaron, quick question, silly one. Challenge ops, labor market ops, different, all in the same. Do we rename the slide? Any <laughs> anything on yeah, that? I would, I would call it challenge ops. Um, I don't know if the economic structure as we develop will continue to be uh, labor markets. I think there might be shifts to like the app allowing us to do more in different types of campaigns. Um, so I just think of it as challenge instead of bounties because there's a little bit of different structure there. So I would call the team and think of the team as challenge operations. Fair, fair. Thanks for clarifying. No problem. Are there more questions or are we good to keep going? I don't hear any questions or see in the chat yet. Um, so let's do protocol dev for that. Hey, everybody. Yeah, the team is uh, pushing along. The I guess big news from last week is a lot of progress on uh, designs for comments. Uh, Going to be finishing out that this week. I know being able to leave comments on the app is some hot feedback we've gotten. That is coming soon. And the other big features are going to be cross-chain payments and more granular permissioning on both marketplaces and challenging. Uh, but you're welcome to check out the GitHub board. We need to get better at like posting regular updates. That's something we've been talking about for like the small incremental changes. But they're happening live. It's all public on GitHub. We'll find a way to get that information more accessible. That's pretty much the week. Any questions? I got two. <laughs> Lots of questions today. <laughs> um, the I am able to filter. Uh, how would how would that work if somebody's not signed in with their wallet yet? Would that show them everything and then? apply after they're signed in or yeah anything to add there i have no idea we'll have to test that and see i could imagine it showing nothing or everything it wouldn't be meaningful until you are signed in because it's going to be based on the badges in your wallet right yeah so like i'm thinking of a scenario where somebody clicks on the um, app and sees kind of a, there's nothing there that but that's because they're not signed in 
Um, by default, these are all unchecked for what it's worth. And if mm -hmm. my internet connects, yeah, well, when I try to set one of the flags, it pops up a dialog telling me to connect. So it'll show everything. Okay. And if you try okay. and filter, it says you can't filter to you're connected. Gotcha. Awesome. And then another um, kind of quick, very super tactical, small um, couple of people today, just like a couple of analysts noticed that they submitted something and they couldn't see their submission. Is that a known issue or um, do they submit a bug report? Yeah, so that, that was come up a couple of times. No, that's a known issue. Yeah, we're sorry, let that through. Um, it's an issue because we were changing like how we order because we're using timestamps. So we're changing the, like how we applied ordering to the entries that we show. And it introduced a bug that was like double, like repeating some items. The fix for that should have gone out. So if people are still seeing it like right now, please do holler. Um, but the fix went out a few hours ago. I can get the exact time and post it in the chat. Okay, that's that's awesome. That would be great if you can maybe post it in App General for folks to see. That would be super useful. Yeah, it should have been uh, three hours ago. Thank you. That's really awesome. Yeah. I have no more questions. Does anyone else have questions before we move on? Nope. Sounds good. <laughs> Thanks, Ed. Thanks. And uh, let's go to BizDev. James. Hey everyone, um, I'll be pretty quick. Um, so last week added Alum, Santiment, Blockpore, Chainbase, Setup Block, and Gallup as data partners, which is super exciting. Um, this week, um, actually this morning, Subquery signed up today, um, bringing our total to 26. Um, and then meeting set this week with Gold Sky, Index to XYZ, Bello, Data File Alliance, uh, Whale Map, Kaiko. Um, so those are the meetings set this week as of now. I just think the main thing is that it's really exciting to see how many people want to um, partner with us and help it, help build this uh, ecosystem. That's it for me. So exciting. Thank you, James, for your update. Um, if there are no questions, let's go to DevOps. Hey everyone. Um, so biggest thing from last week was that we got a version of the contractor policy that everyone could actually read through and understand. Uh, so we're hoping to get that finished up this week. This is your last call to go look at the thread, um, look at what changes are proposed, make any comments. Uh, otherwise, it's going to go back to the lawyer in a couple days, and then hopefully we'll start voting on it. And then we can move on to other things, finally. That's all I got. Thanks, man. Everyone check it out. Um, Treasury, I don't think we have bills today. Do we? No, I don't think so. so um, I see catching up on bounty payments for all chains, 61 plus from batches from season three, and um, rework Airtable for season four contributor comp because our org structure has changed, pods have changed, et cetera. Yeah, I, I don't really have any context there. So I'm just going to go over to marketing and Alex. Yep, uh, I've got some people. The team is almost formed. I'm waiting uh, on a couple of people to get back to me. And uh, we're going to have a whole crew to help out with marketing stuff. Um, working with the education team to sync up on content and how we're positioning that and who we're talking to. Um, so really this week, it's mostly about just getting the people who are going to help out onboarded so they know what they're doing and our setup for success there. Um, we're keeping the Twitter spaces rolling. We're going to get, start getting some like specific threads for their content, specifically for threads um, written and um, yeah, working on some growth hack stuff for getting some more people in the community. Thanks, Alex. Are there any questions before we go to education, I think? I don't hear any questions, so let's go to Vida with education. Hello, everyone. So um, as you know, like in education, our big uh, priority right now is um, running sessions for partners. So um, we're spending now some time um, ensuring that all the processes are right. That's what's a big priority last week is to kind of um, ensure that all, um, all project management um, is clear um, and the processes are right 
um, for everyone. Um, and um, this uh, week, we do have free sessions with the partners, which is standard. And in addition to that, um, we will be focusing on the most important courses, which are 101 and 201 and continuing planning for those, as well as planning um, a foundational course, um, which is essentially um, aimed at people prior to the 101 program um, to onboard them onto blockchain and mode analytics. Then it comes to um, a concern. So we do have quite a lot of those partner sessions coming up. Well, all of a sudden, we have 26 partners in total. Um, and attendance to those sessions is very important as a, as a metric that we report as well to partners. As, and um, we do need to find a way on how can we actually get more people on board, um, like participating live in those sessions. Um, it's The problem is not necessarily the um, events not coming um, up in front yeah of enough people's eyes is more that potentially um, they're just not framed in a way which sparks motivation for someone to participate in those events. So as well this week, we'll try, we'll try to find ways and how can we actually um, um, increase the uh, rate of attendance for our um, partner sessions. And if you have any ideas of how this these events can be framed differently, or how can we, we motivate people more to attend those events, and they are very welcome. Thank you. Thanks, Vaida. Um, question slash thought on the concern or blocker part. Are the challenges currently or wherever they are, there are partner challenges, are they going with um, kind of simultaneously with the product? demos or workshops to serve as an additional motivator? So, so essentially, um, they will be, uh, the challenges that will be paid by the partners will be coming after um, the workshops and the demos. However, we're not really communicating um, about the challenges to the community yet. I'm not sure to which degree we can do that yet, um, but I, I, I do believe it being an important motivator and yeah, let's see if we can like communicate it, it to some degree at least, and if, or there's something we can communicate it. Yeah, good point about um, yeah, what's, what's possible, but if that's possible, maybe that's just one of the things. All right, um, we are 31 minutes. We started a couple of minutes late today and I'm um, sorry for asking a lot of questions, but I'm gonna go with community. So we are um, we are working on a few of the areas that are in our priorities this season. Um, what Some of the things we're collaborating with other pods and functions as you saw. Um, Zook talked about the dashboard teardown, which is happening tomorrow, and uh, Gigi and Sam are going to give feedback on people's dashboards live in, in using the new peer review rubric and uh, kind of just giving tips on how it could score better and the, how the work could score better and get paid higher. Uh, so if you want to join that, we are tomorrow at 9 a.m. Eastern. We uh, started our new series for blog posts showcasing the top topical, interesting um, work that our analysts make. And the first post was about the Shanghai or Chappella upgrade predictions from our analysts. And we we're planning the second one this week, by the end of the week. Um, the third chapter or fourth session of the analyst Twitter course, which was also mentioned um, by Zook, is going live on Friday with DJ and Ashley from Flipside. Uh, we are starting to plan and work on community-driven kind of modules for knowledge sharing called expansion packs. Um, and there's more and better networks as as always these days. If you see the networks tab, um, you might just see some new ones pop up. And um, we are inching towards the 5,000. We're almost there. Uh, we're going to be a big day when we do reach it. And uh, that's all I got, unless DJ has something to add or Sandesh. Uh, my only addition is something that Patrick alluded to. DJ, I think you're muted. 
I just can't seem to get it right, can I? First I type too loudly, then I talk at length and no one can hear me. Um, real quick, I am reaching out, Patrick alluded to this, to a bunch of us based on people getting paid in 2022 and us sending you 1099. Obviously, everyone here has already paid their taxes because they're due tomorrow, at least if you live in the US. But for record keeping, uh, we do need the 1099s. So if someone reaches out to you claiming to be me and asking for your tax information, I promise you it's legit. Um, just letting people know that that continues to happen. And so if you got a message and didn't respond because you weren't sure, it is in fact legitimate. One of the rare cases where our concern or blocker on the slide does not apply. Yes. You can share your private info with the actual DJ. Yes. Um, if there are no more additions. Oh, go ahead. That's it. That's all. Go chair. All right. Are there any questions to round this out? Um, any last minute comments? Anything to add? All right. Um, sounds like they aren't. Thank you all so much for being here on a Monday as usual. We'll see you throughout the week. And um, next week, same place, same time. Thanks all. Bye.